Alrighty. Uh, day two of getting the slug out of the uh, handlebar. As you can see, this one, it's got no slug in it. <laughs> it's because it's laying right there on the floor. And as you can tell, I'm not out of breath and I'm not struggled and worked and slaved and tried to get it out. <laughs> Today, I uh, took a smarter approach. I took some grinding wheels, several as a matter of fact, and the trusty Dremel. You can see the uh, grinding little stones here. I took a cutoff wheel, like uh, one of these guys right here. So, what I did was I took the grinding stones and I uh, ground out as much of the weld as I could get at. And then I took one of these, which you can see. Hopefully, I got the same right. You can see this is too big to get in. I'd have been gnawing at the bar end if I'd used that. What I did was I took an old uh, blade and cut some holes in it, as you can see there. What that did was it wears this down to a point where it'll actually fit inside this. Once I did that, basically holding it like this, I finished cutting uh, the weld that was left and kind of ground out whatever was left in there. And then I went back with this stone, which used to be square, or not square, but hang on, let me get you where I can. Well, hell, I'll just set it down. It used to, oh shit. Calm down there. This whole thing used to be like this end. It was flat all the way across, and it was flat down the backside. But I stuck it in there and was grinding like this in a circle. And I wore it down to a cone shape. But uh, once I got it all ground out, I sprayed some uh, silicone lubricant down in here. Then I took various size drill bits, starting with uh, these little guys here and just kind of worked my way up to this one finally. After I did that, I kind of wallowed it out with a drill bit to kind of give it an angle to help the screw get in. And then once I put the screw in, Hopefully I got this aim where you guys can actually see it. Once I put the screw in, put the slide hammer on, bam, 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 the sucker came right out like butter, butter. Easy, easy. As you can see, you can see where I ground the, the front of it there a little bit with the welds. But, uh, yeah, once I ground it down, cut it, pop, 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 that sucker came right out. Easy peasy. The bar end's a little tapered from me grinding the welds out. But uh, ain't too bad. I uh, cut the flash, the plastic here flush. So I'll get the grips put back on, glue back on, and then I'll stick the uh, bar end mounts in for my uh, my uh, turn signals. What I'm gonna have to do is uh, glue the hand grip back on, which you can see sitting right there. Glue that back on. Put the bar end in route my wires down and out um, same thing with this side I don't think I don't think I want to pop a hole in each one so what I'll probably do is pop a hole in one of these uh, being at the wirings on this side I don't know I haven't decided fully yet whether I want to I don't like wires being shown so and I can't go through the bottom so what I'll do is I'll probably pop it out right here in the back. I'm thinking, you know, you move some of this shit out of the way. What I'm thinking is I'll probably pop it, pop a hole right here in the back side, down low, and either run it around the front, or I'll pop it and bring it down underneath. You know, just pop it out the back and bring it down and go into the headlight. Because that's where the connector is for the blinkers is up in here. So I'll probably pop it, go down in here. That way when I turn the wheel, you know, it's not getting pinched or anything crazy. But, uh, damn, I got some rust up on here too. I need to see all that. I have to clean that up too. But, uh, that's my next task is to drill a hole and route it through. 
Um, a little tip for you guys if you're trying to run wire or anything through something like this, um, get you a plug and cover up one end, like stick a piece of foam or whatever on this end or tape it so that it's sealed. You drill your hole here and then uh, you can turn on a vacuum on this end or you can do, uh, blow it through this end. But uh, if you take a piece of uh, dental floss, stick it in there. Um, just If you want to tie a little piece of paper on it, something that will give it a little extra to blow. But uh, you just shoot air through here and what it will do is it will suck that dental floss down and then shoot right out your hole. Hopefully I'm aiming. That's the problem with an original hero. I don't have a back, so I can't see what exactly I'm aiming at. Which I got a little off in my last video on some of the stuff I was showing you guys. But like I said, you throw your dental floss in there, shoot some air through it, and it'll pop it out of the hole where you want it, and then you just drag it through with the uh, wire or whatever. And that'll let you route your wires down to where you need to go. Um, in the video, I was talking about this horseshoe. Hopefully, I'm aiming at it. I was talking about cutting out a little horseshoe shape. I was talking about this piece right here. I got to cut a piece that kind of looks like that right there. Because I need to get that uh, seat mount, or not seat mount, but a fender mount to clamp in here. So that the fender can actually bolt in. The fender also has struts that come down also. So it's not just supported by this only. Although it is a single fender, single rider setup. You can't throw a passenger on there. But uh. I'm going to continue on with uh, getting this sorted out and getting it drilled and then I'll route the wires for the bar ends and then uh, I'll come back and show you guys what I did. Um, if you do have to glue hand grips on, um, people recommend different stuff. People use uh, like CA glue, crazy glue, cyanoacrylate, <laughs> ooh fancy words from the, from the Georgia boy. But uh, as you can see, they probably use crazy glue on this. That's why it's all shiny and shit. But uh, what I like to use is a... Uh, well, my mind's gone blank. I can't think what it's called now. What I like to use is this stuff right here. The seal all. It's a contact cement. Um, what you do is you just kind of squirt some on a screwdriver. Give it a little... Down inside the grip. Same thing with the grip up here on the bar. Squirt some on there, just kind of smear it around all over. And give it about a minute, minute and a half. They say a minute to two minutes on this stuff to let it set up. And then you slide it on real quick and give it a rotate to where you want it. Then once it's on there, you just let it sit and it's, it'll be there forever. <laughs> well, not necessarily forever, but it will be there for a long period of time. This is good stuff. Um, it's a little bit more challenging to get it off when you get this stuff on there, but... I think it's worth it. I'd rather it stay on than slip off and, you know. I, I've been riding a motorcycle before and had their fucking grip come off, so that's not cool. Uh, what else? That's it, man. I'm, um, I'm going to press on with wiring up the, the uh, handlebar lights and getting all that stuff put back together. And then uh, we'll continue on with the rest of it. Um, uh, I've sent out some inquiries to various paint shops about getting this thing painted. Um, I was going to do it myself originally, but this color is a uh, candy lime green, I think is what they call it. And uh, I don't know if the camera can pick it up or not, but find a good clean spot here. As you can see, it's got some kind of a, almost like a little metal flake, real fine metal flake to it. And with it being a candy color, I didn't know if I'd be able to uh, match it. I did the price figuring on it. It'd be a couple hundred bucks for me to do it myself because I'd have to buy the sandpaper and the paint because it's a two-stage. Um, if I get it in aerosol can format, um, I can order it direct from the supplier that makes these paints. And uh, it'd be about 70 bucks in paint just for the, the base and the top coat. So I figure 70 bucks, then like the 30 or so for sandpaper and shit to sand it all down. Then you got to figure your time involved and all that. Um, 
with my work schedule and everything, I'm wanting to ride this sucker, not just, you know, let it sit in the garage. And I know you guys are anxious to see it built and riding. Um, I'm seriously considering just bombing it out in a black fender, but I don't know how that's going to look. I need to get me a piece of paper or something and cut it and stick it on there, see how it would look, which is black. Maybe take the seat and set it on there, do black and black, you know. But I'm still not digging it. I got to I got to do that. I got to have that green fender, man. I, I I keep trying to talk myself into the black, but uh yeah, it's got to have that green fender, man, cuz that looks just that green is just too cool in the back. Sitting there, you know. But uh anyway, I rambled on enough about this. Uh I'll get back at it and uh I'll show you guys the update on the uh, getting the bars put back together and everything in just a little bit. Alrighty, let's pick up where we left off. Let me show you these lights here. And these bar end lights right here. Let me get this little mother out. Let me see if I can hold it just right with a light to get it. Um, if you look, you can see there's a little taper down at the base. Um, what you do is you stick your bar ends, you tighten them down, and you know they stay because this little rubber piece here swells up. But that ba that base right there at the bottom is flared out. So what I got to do is I had to open up this end. These uh, grips are actually aluminum with a rubber insert. Well, the end hole was too small. So I hope the camera can pick that up, but I had to flare it out right there on the ends. You can see a little bit of a flare to it. But uh, now when I put the bar end in, that flare on the turn signal, it'll fit flush in there so that when I put it in, it'll be completely flush with the bar end. Um, what I just did was I put my little uh, contact cement on the bar and inside the grip, slid that sucker on and it's already set up. Uh, it takes two to six hours for it to cure. I was gonna go ahead and put the bar ends in and wire it up and everything, but um, contact cement, the way it works is it needs to off gas the uh, solvents in order for it to fully uh, bond. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna leave it open for a couple hours, let that go ahead and uh, do a full bond, full, uh, full cure. And then uh, I'll come back in later tonight and finish wiring it all up. You know, it's weird. I uh, took these bar ends off and this end here with the plastic that's on the uh, throttle. I could turn it and it would snap right back. But as you see now, it doesn't want to snap back right away. I don't know why. I don't know what the deal is with that. It's not glue or anything on it. It's just, I guess this new grip squishes the plastic enough that it makes it not want to pull back all the way. You may have to look at getting a, thro a stronger throttle uh, return spring. And it may need to, some lube down in these mothers to help also because you can see it's not wanting to return by itself at all so we'll get that taken care of but like i said i'm gonna let this cure up leave these ends off so it can off gas and all that and then uh, i'll proceed with the wiring stay tuned